Hey guys, what's going on? BMG here. Today we have December's tier list for the champs in MCOC. Before we start, I did make some changes, if you guys can tell. I will pull up the original one right here on the video. Um, if I make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see. Um, if you guys can tell, the color key up here where my mouse is at is no longer there. It's actually on the side, so if you look at the key above me, it's on the side of that key because some people were getting confused that like they thought Spiderham was above average, but they didn't, you know, see that the color actually meant that he's like a great champ. So that was one thing that I uh, changed, and then I also changed the Sig 60 icon uh, from a star to a lightning bolt. That way you can kind of tell the difference between the actual rankings of or like the emojis, so like Kingpin, Aegon, Mantis. They have that lightning bolt. And then Crossbones has that like shooting st or that actual star. That's like the Sig 200 one. So uh, just to show you guys that I do read the comments a little bit, take your guys' feedback into consideration. Um, I didn't make too many movements in the tier list. Um, I don't think I made any other than adding the new, uh, two new champs because I just wanted to see how the rankings play out for the first uh, first two iterations of this. I also don't know how long I'm going to keep doing this. If you guys want me to keep doing it, um, you know, let me know in the comments. Um, the last video did pretty well, but um, it's not about that. It's about what you guys want to see. So, um, Without further ado, let's get into the two new characters this month. Let's start with Jessica. No, let's start with Mantis because she's easier to explain. Um, last month in the tier list video, I explained like everything about Shuri and Atuma. I don't think that's necessary. Um, it made the video just way too long because I spent like eight minutes talking about each character. So I'm just gonna like give a synopsis on how to play the character. Um, so like TLDR for Mantis is um, she's got this tranquilize ability which reduces the ability actually of debuffs. It's like neutralized but for debuffs. So if you tranquilize the opponent, they can't place debuffs on you. Um, against science champs, it's already at 100% potency. And then uh, with her signature ability, she can increase it from 5% to 25% at max sig. Um, any other class other than the science class, the potency is 25%. Uh, the max that can get to is 100 and or no, the max that can get to is 50%. The max the one against the science champs can get to is 125. So you really only want to like rely on this ability for science champs. So I don't know if her awaken ability is too useful. Um, the blue point is the more valuable one, I think, at least in my opinion, because when you uh, inflict a mixed emotion passive while the opponent is inflicted with tranquilize effect, it pauses the tranquilize effects for a certain amount of seconds. So at 660, it's 0.7 seconds, and that's over half the benefit from her SIG. So I think 660 is a sweet spot for her. That's why I have that lightning bolt icon next to her name. But if you guys were wondering, she has these mixed emotion passives. And essentially, she places an Infuriate on the opponent if you do one of your light attacks and dash back. Uh, it can't be your fourth light attack, but if it's your first, second, or third and dash back, you'll Infuriate them. And then when you intercept them, uh, you play, I think you gain a mixed motion, uh, a passive, or you place it on them. Regardless, it's your currency for damage. And then landing a light, uh, light combo Ender inflicts an Intimidate, which makes them want to block. And hitting their block will give you mixed emotion passives, and these mixed emotion passives are they're useful because um, when you charge your heavy attack, it converts all those into a sleep passive, and the max duration is four seconds. Uh, sleep is essentially like a stun, but it just puts them to sleep. Like no one's immune to sleep. Um, so essentially, you place these debuffs on the opponent that make the AI do certain things, and then you play into what that debuff does. And then you build up to as many uh, mixed emotion passives as possible, and then heavy charge, and then do the first two hits of your heavy attack, and then cancel with the special two because the special two is guaranteed critical hits if it's activated during Mantis's heavy attack. And her heavy attack, uh, each hit will grant her a uh, cruelty buff, so you want those first two hits to land. Um, and while she's charging her heavy attack, she gains fury passives. I don't know if I said that, but. She's going to be really good for like battlegrounds, health pools, and war sized health pools. I just don't know how useful she will be in war itself. Um, she's going to be really solid in battlegrounds though. She's got really high attack. 
Um, and, w and pair that with guaranteed critical hits and a way to increase her uh, attack rating with the Fury Passes. She's just going to be hitting really hard. Uh, I don't think she's going to be an insanely hard defender. If you guys think Null is a hard defender with his encroaching uh, corruption, you might find her annoying because she is encroaching sleep on the special one, so you kind of want to push her to her special two. You also want to be wary about baiting heavy attacks because when she charges a heavy, she'll put a sleep passive on you. Um, oh wait, no, this can't be activated on defense, so you're actually good. So the only way you have to worry about the sleep passive is a special one. So yeah, I don't think she's going to be too tough a of a defender. Um, so yeah, um, what was I going to say now? Um, yeah, so she's not that tough a of a defender. I mean, she could be tricky if you don't know how to play against her, but pretty much just get, get her to her special two and not worry about anything and should be fine. So... I believe if I take this down, that is why she's put between Hitmonkey and Black Cat. Um, I know some people were commenting about where Valkyrie's at. Everyone from Black Panther to pretty much Killmonger, in my opinion, is like tied. You can pretty much <laughs> make a case for either of them to be better in certain areas of the game. And I think that's where Mantis is going to land for now. I think she's going to fill like a similar role to like Hitmonkey in Battlegrounds. Just be a super fast skill option uh, she's gonna be very flexible on like how you can use her uh, she's pretty cool she's like a like a skill tiger almost I, I might throw that skill like high skill emoji in there next to her but for now I think she's fine where she's at so next up we have Jessica Jones I don't know if you guys can tell where she's at right now she's under I Hulk and above the wasp I think she's tied with wasp ant-man anti-venom spider-gwen uh, I just don't see her being completely useful right now in the game. We also don't know if she's coming out as a 5 star or 6 star anytime soon. We have no idea how that's going to work. So just a quick little like glance over of her ability or her abilities. Uh, she's going to be a kind of annoying defender if you let her defensive kit flourish. If you don't take her out in uh, you know, if you don't take her out fast enough, she can go like passively unstoppable for like the whole fight. Um <laughs> which is pretty nuts um so her loop essentially is just to throw the special one as many times as you can throw a bunch of different unique things like the box garbage can fire hydrant uh pallet tire propane tank pizza kitchen sink the kitchen sinks the best one um and then you want to throw your special two on activation that will gain a fury passive increasing attack rating um and then you gain an additional fury for each unique object she's thrown in the fight. Uh, max fury passives are three, so you kind of want to just throw the special three or special one three times, and then start looping special twos. I don't know how useful she's going to be overall though, because um, she is kind of a ramp up champ, and ramp up champs are insanely useful right now in the game. Um, but you kind of want the kitchen sink to apply because it applies. Uh, all the other effects from these uh, <laughs> from all these other things that she can throw but it puts them at 50% potency but still it's better than you know having just one thing you kind of want them all and then you would want that to line up with your special two to have like max damage because the physical vulnerability um, and all that stuff heavy attack pauses all uh, non stun debuffs uh, by the special attacks for two seconds um, but yeah, as a defender, she can go unstoppable. Um, <laughs> she can go unstoppable pretty uh, frequently. Um, so, where is this ad? So, when she has uh, five plus debuffs, uh, gain an unstoppable passive lasting two seconds after the end of the attack, and then ten plus debuffs, gain an unblockable passive lasting two seconds after the end of the attack. Uh, duration of these effects are increased by four, uh, four seconds flat when fighting as a defender. And then went while her investigation is at seven or more, resistance up and unstoppable also activate during her special attacks, regardless of debuffs on the opponent. So if she has um, you know, seven or more investigation, she'll go unstoppable when she launches her own special attacks. And then the way she gains uh, investigation is when you're above... Um, a bar of, or two bars of power she gains one investigation every four seconds and then she gains um, she, gain, she yeah she gains investigation when the opponent is inflicted with a non-stun debuff 
Uh, the way around that is like cleanse. Uh, she loses two investigation when the opponent gains or activates a cleanse effect. So Jabari Panther, Black Cat, Shang Chi, they're really good counters to her. Or someone who could just counter Unstoppable like Valkyrie, she could be solid for her. But she's a pretty, <laughs> pretty niche defender and like needs niche counters. But um, yeah, I don't see her making like too many waves right now. Uh, you never know. That's why I have her, you know, rated pretty moderately. Uh, same, well, not really same with Mantis. Mantis is pretty solid where she's at right now. But Atuma Shuri and Jessica Jones, I start them out moderately and like put them in the middle because I'm not sure exactly where they're gonna land. We can adjust it as time goes on. I just don't want to say like Shuri's the best tech champ, and then all of a sudden she's not. Um, if that makes any sense, like I know she's not the best tech champ. She's far from it, but like I don't want to overhype a character and then you know have them end up sucking that would you know be a bummer i don't want to have like people see this and be like oh sure he's great i'm gonna rank her up and then like she's not so we start conservative with our rankings and then we work our way up so that's pretty much it for the new characters this month i uh took away some value shifts from the last month's tier list i kept some up here because like spider-man stark enhanced and stealth suit um, they're still kicking ass in Battlegrounds, they're just really flexible. Uh, both those champs with like Strikers from Relics, they're like insanely useful. Um, I don't want to have like Relics be a part of the rankings, but like they're just super flexible for Battlegrounds. Um, Quake and Magic still have not been announced as 6 stars, so they're only 5 stars and we have 7 stars coming around the corner next year. So therefore their value is going down. Uh, Sorcerer, Guillotine, 2099, and iHulk, their value's gone down in my opinion just because there, there's not many places where they're great options anymore. Um, that might change when 8.2 comes out. Um, Sauron still has that value shift down because I really don't think he's that great of a defender. If you don't know how to fight against him, then he's a good defender, but you could pretty much play around him without having a counter to any of his abilities. He's not like someone... Uh, he's not like Jessica Jones. Like, Jessica Jones will just go passively unstoppable when he can't fight her. Uh, whereas Sauron just goes unblockable and you could play around that. As, if you're good at dancing around with an unblockable opponent. So, I don't think he's that great. And I think his value has gone down quite a bit. Um, I have not updated the uh, Karate Mike emoji yet. Uh, still, oh, I took it off Icarus. Uh, he hasn't really talked about Icarus much. But he's on a Howard the Duck kind of... Um, how do you, what, what's the word I'm looking for? He, he, he's, he's, he's been talking a lot about Howard the Duck and won't stop talking about him. Um, there's an argument for putting it next to Titania as well. Maybe Craven. We'll see next month depending on what he, uh, what he does and <laughs> what he bugs me with. But uh, that's it for this video. I didn't want to make it too long. I just wanted to kind of make it quick. If you guys want like in-depth actual... Uh, explanations on these characters I'm gonna start linking things in the actual like champion placements themselves so like you could click on like apocalypse for example and then you'll see a video on apocalypse pop up I'm gonna try to do that with the new characters that come out and just so you guys a quick reference uh, like always the description has the link for this in it as well as my discord if you guys want to talk about it there if you guys want an actual picture of the tier list, so you'd like save it to your phone, uh, I'm going to be posting it on Twitter. I'm going to have it in my Discord, and I'm also probably going to post it on my Instagram. So if you guys want to check those out, feel free. <laughs> but uh, that's the end of this video. If you guys enjoyed, hit like, sub if you're new. If you already subbed, you know I love you. See you guys in the next video or stream. Peace out.